Hello, Randy, K7AGE. Been working on my BitX40 transmitter a little bit. One of the things that you really should have in your toolbox is a dummy load. So I've been using this um, 5 watt 50 ohm termination. It's a Tektronix part and it has a heat sink. It's kind of nice, but I'm going to show you how you can build your own with a few resistors, a diode, and a capacitor, which will even allow you to measure your RF power. Let's take a look at what we'll be doing. So I'm going to be doing is copying one of Elecraft's mini module kits. And if we scroll down through this web page, we'll come to the DL1 wideband 20 watt dummy load. Now theirs is good up to uh, 225 megahertz. I don't know if mine will achieve that performance on, uh, on perf board, but it'll certainly be fine for HF. So let's look at it in a little more detail. I've opened up the instruction manual for the Elecraft dummy load and just to let you know this isn't some proprietary design that I'm ripping off and going to copy the basics of this is pretty common you can find examples around the internet if you'd like to buy the nice board in the kit from Elecraft it's about $26 so let's look at the schematic first here to see what this is it uses eight 100 ohm 3 watt metal film resistors you do not want to have wire wound resistors because there will be too much inductance and that won't present a, a very a resistive load to the transmitter. When you have four equal resistors in parallel, like we do on each side of the common here, the resultant resistance is one-fourth of that. So four 100 ohm resistors in parallel is 25 ohms. So we have 25 on the right here of the common and 25 ohms on the left. So if we come from the center conductor, we'll go through 25 ohms to the common and then another 25 ohms to ground. There's our 50 ohm uh, load for the transmitter. We tap off at the center here at the 25 ohm position, go through the 1N5711 Shockey diode and a capacitor, um, and then our test points that we can hook up a meter. And this is what their kit looks like. Again, the BNC, the eight power resistors, capacitor and diode, and a couple test points to connect the meter. So when you have your meter on the uh, test point, you measure the voltage, and let's say, uh, we measure 15 volts. So we come across here at 15 volts and it's about this dot here and we come down and it looks like it's nearly nine watts. You can also calculate the power and up at the beginning here is a formula. So power in watts equals to the voltage that you measure plus 0.25 volts, which is the voltage drop across the Shockey diode. Um, so that combination of voltages added together, squared, and then divided by the 25 ohm resistance, remember we're measuring from the midpoint, not from the center pin of the BNC, will equal your power. So, so these are the resistors that I bought for, the, for my project. 20 resistors, they're 3 watts, they're metal film resistors. I selected 100 ohms, they were 293, including free shipping. I have checked these with my ohm meter, and they're all like 99.7 ohms or so, so they're quite acceptable. The Shockey diodes, uh, I got 10 diodes uh, for $1.48, and um, again, free shipping out of China. And um, the resistors came fairly quickly, just a few weeks. I think the diodes took about six weeks. So if you're in a hurry, you'll want to buy these locally. So here's all the parts for the project. I have my eight 100-ohm 3-watt uh, resistors, uh, my 1N5711 uh, Shockey diode, my um, 0.01 microfarad capacitor, and my BNC. I have a little piece of perf board. It has copper on one side, just plain phenolic on the other side. So I'm going to mount the BNC and run uh, two rows of four resistors down through the holes here and uh, be a lot of point-to-point -point soldering on the back. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, place all the parts on the board. Okay, so I have the BNC and the eight resistors uh, placed on the board. And one of the things that Elecraft recommends is to lift the resistors uh, off the board because these may get hot if you are transmitting for any length of time and to keep from burning the board. And they say you use something like a popsicle stick. Well, I have this DuPont connector header, and I can just slide that underneath these resistors uh, to place them up off the board while I solder. And the iron is warming up. Okay, I have the um, 
the header underneath the resistors on this part of the board to space the uh, resistors up off the board. So what I'm going to do first is just solder the leads to the pads, and that'll hold the resistors in, and then I'll bend the wires around and solder the resistors together. And now I'll work on the other row of resistors, and you know this soldering that I'm doing is is not to provide electrical connection at this point. It's just to add uh, the mechanical strength to the um, to the resistors, keep them from flopping around, and get all these soldered now. Okay, so I have all these now soldered so they're attached to the board. So what I've done here is just kind of bent the leads all over to kind of towards the centers, and just physically kind of bent them over, cut them off, and mashed them together. And now I'll just do some massive soldering. Connect these all together. Yeah, not very pretty, but it'll work. Okay, ready for some soldering. I've taken uh, one of the leads and run them up here to the center pin for the BNC. So I connect to the, uh, the top of the resistors to that and uh, solder all these resistors together. Just kind of fill in the, where all these leads fill, uh, attach, touch each other. And, uh, big wad of leads here so it'll take quite a bit of solder and I do have my little fan running to blow the fumes away and I'll do this last group let me do a quick check here with the ohm meter go from the center pin to this top of the first group of resistors and I should get basically zero ohms and to the midpoint I should see 25 ohms so there's 25.2 and across the two banks of parallel resistors there we go, 50.1. So, as far as DC resistance, it looks good. I now have the resistor and capacitor mounted on the board here. So, the anode end of the diode goes to the junction of the resistors. Uh, the cathode with the line goes towards the capacitor. I've taken the diode lead and it goes through the hole in the board and comes back out and makes a loop to connect the meter. The other end of the capacitor lead connects over to the ground lug on the um, BNC and I also have a loop to connect the other end of the meter to. So turn it over and solder. And I'm now ready to solder here so I'm soldering the diode to the resistors. I'm just putting a tack on the hole there to stabilize it. Here's the junction of the diode to the capacitor and here's the other end of the capacitor goes up to the uh, solder lug on the BNC and down here I have a little piece of wire which forms the loop and just solder that in on the board here to stabilize the loop and, uh, and I got one more wire here to stabilize this is the other loop for the voltmeter to connect to so all I have to do is connect a wire from the ground lug of the BNC over to the bottom stack of resistors here so I now have the wire connected from the ground lug of the BNC over to the bottom of the stack of resistors. Uh, this is number 18 gauge wire. It's, it's pretty heavy. So I think I'm done. We can try and test it out. Okay, time to check out the dummy load board with a power measurement. What I have here is my FT817 uh, running on 40 meters. I have it in the FM mode, so I have a full carrier output. I have a cable connected from the output of the radio to the transmitter jack on the back of the SWR meter. On the antenna connector, I have a second cable which goes around to the dummy load board. I have my digital voltmeter connected across the uh, two test points to measure and the voltage. So let's try this at the 5 watt position on the FT817. There's nothing shown here in the bottom, so that means it's the full power. I have the power meter set on 20 watts. So when I key that up, I'm seeing just a hair over 6 watts on the meter and 10.48 volts. I entered 10.48 volts into a simple spreadsheet I've made, and it says I have 4.66 watts. So the board measures at 4.66, the meter measures at 6, and the radio should be in the 5 watt position. So there's a little bit of disparity there. Let's try the next power level on the FT817. I press the button and now it's in the two and a half watt position. So I key up the, the radio and now I can change this to the five watt position and read here on the bottom scale. It's just under three watts. The meter says 
7.44, and entering 7.44 into the spreadsheet gives me 2.4 watts. So, okay, the next power setting on the FT817 is 1 watt. So I key up the radio, and I'm measuring just over a watt on the meter. Uh, the meter measures 4.68, and that calculates to 0.99 watts. And the fourth power position on the radio is a half watt position. And I see it just a hair over a half watt on, on the meter. I measure 3.3 volts. And that calculates to 5.22 watts. Now let's check the SWR. So to do that, I go to calibrate on the function meter. And I'm going to put the radio back in the... 5 watt mode. Let's just double check that. Power 20 watts. There we go. And now I'll go to uh, calibrate. And the way this works with an SWR meter, you go into the calibrate, and you have a knob, and you adjust this for a full scale reading. So I bring that up so it's full scale. And the top scale is SWR. And then you change the switch to SWR. And I can just barely see the meter moving. So that looks pretty good. So I've moved the meter uh, leads over to measure the forward voltage across the diode. Um, in the yellow craft literature instructions, they mention uh, 0.25 volts. That's probably just kind of a, uh, a common number for, for the Shockey diode. I'm measuring 0.311, and that's the value that I've entered in place of 0.25 in my spreadsheet. I've checked the instruction manual for the Diamond SX600, and its accuracy is plus or minus 10%. So that's a 20% window. And Ellicraft mentions in their literature about the about their dummy load that it has an accuracy of 10%. So these really aren't you know precision devices, but you'll be able to do this and tell the difference between you know three watts or five watts and stuff like that. So yeah, it's okay. Um, I think it'll do do fine. I now have the radio on 10 meters on 28.45 megahertz. And if we look at the power, uh, it's showing just a little over 6 watts. And at 10.56, the calculation shows 4.6 watts. So uh, very similar to the values we were getting uh, uh, with 40 meters. If we check the SWR, calibrate, I've done that. So it's at full scale. And SWR, and now we're at about 1.25 yeah, uh, to 1. So, yeah, the SWR has gone up a little bit, and that's, you yeah, know, the lead lengths and things. So uh, having it on the circuit board would certainly be a lot better. Okay, another experiment I thought I would try is to see how, how warm these resistors get. So I'm going to change this to Fahrenheit. Um, so these are right now about room temperature, and I'm going to transmit the 5 watts for one minute and see how warm the resistors get. Okay, so we're at the about the one minute point and uh, they didn't get real warm. They're about 82, 85, 90 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So they will get warm. Of course, the longer you transmit or the higher in power, the hotter they will get. So I think that about wraps it up for my QRP dummy load project. Uh, this is something that you can easily build. A few, few power resistors, a uh, diode and a capacitor, a connector, and a little piece of board to mount it on. And you can have yourself a QRP uh, dummy load with the ability to do power measurements. So I would appreciate a, a thumbs up. If you like this video, uh, please subscribe. And if you haven't subscribed, and I know about 80% of my viewers are not subscribers. If you subscribe, you'll be notified through your YouTube account when I do post new uh, videos. And um, you can follow me on Twitter at K7AGE and on Google Plus at plus K7AGE. So thanks for watching. This is Randy, K7AGE.